I think it's especially challenging when it's a child or a grandchild. And I, the easiest way I can describe it is for the older adult, he, she, they remember that child or grandchild as a baby and as a toddler and maybe as a mouthy teenager and up through all those other stages. And nobody wants to believe that their child or grandchild would do anything to harm them. It's difficult to leave that. Part of what we have seen a lot of is that um, it's not been uncommon to have an adult child or a grandchild to move back in. There's usually financial exploitation going on. There's usually some form of neglect, sometimes physical, not as often, but sometimes sexual. And what we've discovered with that is if the financial exploitation comes forward and is recognized, there seems to be a systemic response to that. But we also notice that sometimes questions aren't being asked of other forms of abuse. And it won't be until a long time later that we may in fact hear about it. I think when the abuser is your adult child, I think there is um, increased shame and guilt. Uh, feeling like you're a bad parent, that somehow it is your fault, that you should have maybe done something differently. Um, I think there is the fear of reaching out for help and having that adult child go to jail. I think that um, is a difficult journey for any parent to go through to have a child go to jail. I think it's extremely hard for an elder to hold their children and their grandchildren accountable. Um, we have a lot of difficulties in our tribal communities where we have a, grandparents raising their grandchildren. And as a result of those relationships, um, some of the abuse is taking place. And they don't want to force that child um, into a system that might, um, might be punitive and don't want to do that kind of harm to that person. So they struggle with wanting to protect their child or their grandchild while wanting to be safe. Well, the very obvious thing that comes to mind is you can't divorce your child. It's your child. They're your flesh and blood. And so when the abuse is perpetrated by an adult child, I have found it is much harder for women to um, cope with. They don't want to call law enforcement. They don't want to turn them in. And then they sometimes question themselves, what kind of mother am I? that I raise the child that can do this to me. So it is definitely more challenging and validating that to her um, I think is very important. I think it's important that we acknowledge the hurt that they must be feeling, the betrayal that they must be feeling. Um, once again, it's that whole belief system of what kind of person am I to raise somebody like this and always, always, it's imperative that we remind them that it's not their fault. I think that's the most delicate time for a woman or a man to realize that the child or the grandchild that they're responsible for, or the child that they raise, is now victimizing them. Um, themes about transgenerational abuse arise. How did we get to this point? Are they mirroring activities or behaviors that I expose them to? There's a lot of shame and guilt around how did we get this far? Maybe I shouldn't have stayed. Now my children are doing this to me. Can I really ask for help now knowing that I've exposed them? They've witnessed these behaviors and I love them. So I'm gonna call the police when I, when should I call the police? Why should I call the police? I'm really the reason why we're in this situation in the first place. And they need help. And I need to help them by any means necessary because this love is a love that, you know, is a love from birth. They may also feel like they are not, they don't want the relationship to end. They don't want their relationship with their child to end. They're looking for help in ending the violence. And the extent to which we as advocates can help survivors negotiate um, when it's possible to save the relationship in the face of violence and when it's not is an important role that I think advocates play.